In this video, I'm going to describe and demonstrate a procedure that can be used to deal with a univariate outlier. And the method is called Windsorize, or to Windsorize a mean. And it's a procedure that was described possibly first, I don't know for sure, by John Tukey back in 1962 in an article entitled The Future of Data Analysis. So this is the future, people, 1962, and yet people are not really using this procedure very much. Tukey describes uh, Charles P. Windsor as the uh, inventor of this procedure uh, to deal with an outlier. And here he writes, when he found an outlier, that is, Charles P. Windsor, in a sample, he did not simply reject it. And what he means there is that he didn't simply delete it. Most people, it seems, simply delete an outlier. And I think that might be a mistake. Rather, he changed its value, replacing its original value by the nearest value of an observation not seriously suspect. And that means not seriously suspected of being an outlier itself. So that is the procedure of Windsorizing. At least that's one procedure of Windsorizing. And John, tu John Tukey goes on to describe some research that shows that Windsorizing uh, actually uh, gives you more stable uh, results. Uh, and this also was reviewed by Dixon himself back in 1980 at the end of this paper, Efficient Analysis of Experimental Observations. Uh, Dixon describes some research that supports the use of uh, Windsorizing, uh, an outlier. And I'll show you what that means to actually Windsorize. It's very, very simple. Here is a uh, data file that I used in a pre previous video to demonstrate a technique to identify an outlier, which was based on the interquartile range rule. And in this case here, variable 3 has a quite serious outlier, and I'll re-demonstrate that uh, now with the uh, box and whisker plot. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see that there is a very suspicious outlying var uh, value here, which is case 12. And this is identified as an outlier because that has an interquartile range value of 3 or more. And case 12, in this case, has a value of 19. And the process, or the procedure of Windsorizing, would involve reducing this value to the next highest value in the sample. Now, the way I would use it is not to replace it exactly with the next largest value, but the the value next v highest value plus one. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's look at the frequency uh, table for variable three so that we can see what the values are in the table. And we can see that the values range here from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here's that very large outlying value of 19. I would change that to a value of 9. And there are other people that use Windsorizing in the same way. The way it was described initially was to transform the 19 into an 8, but in my opinion it would be better to transform the 19 into a value of 9. And so that literally would mean copying and pasting the value, and maybe call this var 3 with a underscore w to denote it as Windsorized, and I would change this 19 into a 9. And now there is no longer an outlying value in this data set. In fact, it's uh, not even close to being an outlying value. We can see here var3 underscore w has a box and whisker plot that is much more uh, suggestive of a normal distribution without any outlying values. So I would personally, if I observed a large value that I knew was not a mistake, either a data entry mistake or a mistake from the procedure that was used to collect the data. So if I knew it wasn't a mistake, it's just a rather unusual observation. I would not delete it because you'll lose power. I would Windsorize it, and I would Windsorize it to the next largest value that is not suspected to be an outlier plus one, just to give it that extra high value that probably is indicative of what it should be. So that's the process of Windsorizing an outlier, which I think is one of the most attractive out there.